Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I teach at the University of Colorado, previously at two campuses of the University of California, and I am a television and film consultant on the topic of Old Norse language, most recently on season two of American Gods. Language is constantly changing, and Old Norse is no exception. Old Norse is just one stage in a series of developing language, starting with well, who knows in the unknown past uh, what language any human being might ultimately uh, have spoken in, in you know, half a million years ago. Uh, but the earliest reconstructable stage uh, that is ancestral to Old Norse as well as to English and many other languages of Europe and Asia is Proto-Indo-European. Now from Proto-Indo-European descended a language we can call Proto-Germanic, spoken in Northern Europe, probably uh, still uh, in, in a cohesive way, perhaps 2,000 years ago. And from Proto-Germanic descend the Germanic languages of yesterday and today, including Old Norse, Old High German, and Old English, and their modern descendants like the modern Scandinavian languages, modern German, and modern English. Now, as language changes, small things pile up, right? From one generation to another, you're not going to see any sort of really, really dramatic change but you will see small little things. So for example, an example I'm always using, uh, back in the 1940s, if you listen to radio transcripts from that time, you will hear American English speakers consistently saying wha, where wh is spelled in a word. What, where, when, why. That is almost unknown in anyone born from about the mid 20th century forward. Personally, I picked it up from my grandparents from what you might call overexposure as a child. <laughs> but uh, it's something that you can expect to be pretty much extinct within probably just a few decades uh, as, a, as a natural spoken form. In fact, uh, you know, this has gone from being something that American English speakers have reinforced that it's that is taught in schools to being something that is actively made fun of, right? You know, in the form of something like cool whip. Well, a change like hua to wa and words like whip becoming whip, uh, is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. You know, just that little change in a generation or two, uh, it, it doesn't make a new language, but 20 changes like that over the course of 20 generations definitely makes a new language. And that's what's happened in the case of the Germanic languages. So when we look at a name like Thor, the name of the god in Old Norse, that is the Old Norse form of something that in Proto-Germanic was probably Thunraz. Now what's happened is some little changes have piled up. A U followed by an A and an unstressed syllable is lowered to O in the history of Old Norse. That A then drops out. Then the N drops out before an R, but not without lengthening the vowel in front of it. Then the Z at the end merges with R as Z always does in the history of Old Norse, giving you Thor from Thunraz and what, four steps, something like that. Now that same word, Thunraz, becomes the English word thunder. This was uh, Old English Thunor, which was apparently the name of the god Thor in Old English, although only in Old Norse do we have stories about this god. That name is preserved in the name of, of course, English Thursday, cognate with, that is, uh, descended from the same ancestor word as German Donnerstag, which apparently preserves the old High German form of this god's name, Donar, modern German Donner, thunder. So the god's name was in fact thunder in Proto-Germanic. Now in American gods, the name Donar is used rather than Thor, the Old Norse form. I'm not sure why, I'm, I'm <laughs> not usually consulted for these kind of creative decisions. Uh, but all that you're looking at then is a form of the name of that god in a different related language, much as the name Wotan is the Old High German form of the same name as Old Norse. Odin descended from the same Proto-Germanic name, probably something like Wodanas. I've explained this a little bit more in my video about Odin versus Woden versus Wotan, which I'll link in a card in the top right as well as in a uh, video link in the end screen of this video. Well, here in northern Colorado, it is mid-April, but we've had a snowstorm. I'm reckoning this is the last of the year. 
you can maybe hear the snow falling down off the trees all around me as they are melted. Weather always changes, and so does language. <laughs> That's a lame attempt at making a nice pithy end. I hope if you enjoyed this video that you'll check out more than uh, 290 other videos about Norse language and myth on this channel, that you'll look at my translated books of Norse mythology. I've translated the original primary sources such as the Poetic Edda and the Saga of the Bolsungs. You can look for my translation called The Wanderer's Hovamal soon too, but Hovamal's also in the Poetic Edda. And if you enjoy these videos made for free in beautiful places, I hope you'll also look at my Patreon page and consider joining the community of backers who help me do this. For now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.